Disney's Disneyland. When you wish upon a star, makes no difference who you are. Each week as you enter this timeless land, one of these many worlds will open to you. Tomorrowland, promise of things to come. Fantasyland, the happiest kingdom of them all. Frontierland, tall tales and true from the legendary past. Adventureland, the wonder world of nature's own realm. Presenting this week from Adventureland, a progress report and a true life adventure in nature's half acre. Now your host, Walt Disney. On our first television program, we showed you a blueprint for a dream. Well, this is the blueprint. And the dream is Disneyland, the park that we're constructing near Anaheim, California. We promised to keep you informed as our dream became a reality. So for a first-hand progress report, let's visit Disneyland now. We could go by car, of course. It's a pleasant 50-minute trip across town. But let's be different. Let's take to the air. Let's go by helicopter. Our point of departure is the studio front lawn. Although we're taking the flyways on this trip, in the future, you'll take the highways when you visit Disneyland. So we're going to travel along one of the routes you're likely to follow. But first, we'll take a swing down across the baseball diamond and over the rooftops of some of the main studio buildings. Then we're on our way. Burbank, Dark Canyon Road cuts through the hills to join the Hollywood Freeway in historic Cohenga Pass. Less than a century ago, this was only a stagecoach trail. At the entrance to the pass, the world-famous Hollywood Bowl, home of Symphonies Under the Stars. We're swinging down through Hollywood now, right past the crossroads of the entertainment world, Hollywood and Vine. get just a glimpse of Western Avenue, the longest, straightest city street in the world, 25 miles without a turn from the Hollywood Hills to the Pacific Ocean. This is the four-level intersection in downtown Los Angeles. This is a city that has always grown outward instead of upward. And so the city hall here, 22 stories, is about the nearest we've come to a skyscraper. Now we're moving east across the Los Angeles River, and we'll keep to the right, following the Santa Ana Freeway, straight on to the Disneyland turnoff. You know, the superhighways of America have many names, parkways, turnpikes, but here in California, since there are no toll charges, we call them freeways. We're approaching Anaheim now, almost there. Turn right at the next corner, Harbor Boulevard, and here we are at Disneyland. This location, by the way, was chosen with the aid of traffic experts as the most accessible spot in Southern California. And our visitors will have no parking problems we will accommodate 10,000 cars. Our first job was to clear these 160 acres, and then the contouring began, and incidentally, to create the rolling hills, mountains, and over two miles of lake and riverbeds, we've already moved over 300,000 cubic yards of dirt. Of course, construction work has been going on for some time now. Here's the beginning of Main Street, a composite of all the small towns in America at the turn of the century. Here you can take a ride in the horse car past the old town hall, the opera house, the firehouse, and if you stay on to the end of the line, you will reach the hub of Disneyland where this camera tower now stands. The railroad station will be at the main entrance. And this embankment, 
called the berm, is the roadbed for a Disneyland railroad. It encircles the entire park. Each excursion train will carry several hundred passengers, and from them you can view the various realms of Disneyland. Now we're approaching Frontierland. And this is a dock site where you'll board a paddle wheel steamer for a trip through the rivers of America. Following one of these waterways, we come to another part of Frontierland, the Painted Desert, where a Wells Fargo stagecoach will take you through the Indian Reservation. Fantasyland and the start of Sleeping Beauty's Castle. Holiday Park, where you can drive a Surrey or take a ride in the horseless carriage. And just beyond, Tomorrowland, where you take off on a rocket ship for a mythical trip through outer space. In this brief aerial tour, we've seen only the bare beginnings and not too much activity. But now let's cut back across the park, and after a little hedge hopping over the trees of Adventureland, We'll come in for a landing. Once we get our feet on the ground, I think we'll see a lot more action. The opening date for the park has been set for midsummer of 1955. And we could never meet this deadline without the complete cooperation of everyone who works here. I think you may notice that things are moving along pretty fast. In fact, unbelievably fast. Man, everywhere you look, things are really jumping. It's a bebop hop with everybody getting into the act. Check this frantic bulldozer. No, I guess you'd call it a super duper scooper. Nervous, nervous. Another scent gent. Strictly on the beat. Here's a cool tool, a Ferris wheel for worms. There's 25 miles of ditches to dig, and par for the course is a mile a minute. Well, dig this crazy digger. It's really digging the most. Now, how about this place? Hot rod houses and crew cut trees. And when it comes to planting the greenery for scenery, look at this man go. Go, man, go, go. Dig it deep and throw it far out. Now, if Mother Nature will get in the groove, we'll really fracture that deadline. Sleeping Beauty's castle, but the cats are wide awake today. Uh-oh, lunch. Well, this figures. You work fast, you eat slow. Fair enough. Somebody blows the whistle on you, and it's back to the same old grind. Now they're slapping the skin on the old Opry house. Hey, get a load of hot hammer Herman here. The forecast must be for rain. Anyway, it all adds up to a short working day. Quitting time, and everybody hurries home, except the night watchman. Well, of course, it was all a trick. And our trickster here is Stuart Jewell, one of our naturalist photographers and an expert in time-lapse photography. On top of this tower are four cameras aimed at the four major realms of Disneyland. 
They operate automatically through all the daylight hours. Checking, setting, and reloading them is a ritual that Stewart must perform regularly. Now, an ordinary camera takes 24 pictures a second, but these take one picture every 15 seconds. And of course, that makes things look a lot faster on your screen. It's as simple as that. Actually, we don't have these cameras up here just for fun. They keep a daily record of the growth and development of Disneyland. In our progress report, the realm of Adventureland gets an A for accomplishment. The operation here is ahead of schedule. Earth movie machines are well into the job of gouging out lake and riverbeds and laying pipe to supply a network of flowing streams. For Adventureland will feature the tropical waterways of the world. And by the way, to fill all the Disneyland waterways, it will require some 15 million gallons. With so much activity and so much heavy equipment, there's bound to be an upset now and then. But the operators take these things in stride, and fortunately, we've had no serious accidents. In a matter of months, these metal monsters will be replaced with creatures cut to nature's pattern. trees, the shrubbery, in fact, all the landscaping here has been imported from equatorial regions all over the world. And this tropical theme will be carried out everywhere. Here at the entrance to Adventureland, you'll find a Tahitian setting and an international dock. Here's a model. From this point, you'll take an excursion trip through nature's secret world. Of course, we don't have an explorer's launch as yet, but we do have our handy Rambler Cross Country to take us on a dry run through the waterways to be. At first, we'll glide through floating tropical gardens, then through Central America and South America. Bright colored birds and brighter flowers line the banks on every side. At these tree stumps, we'll swing up through the Caribbean moving right into the heart of the Everglades. You may think you're looking at a dry sandbank, but with a little imagination, it becomes a mangrove swamp infested with alligators. Now these, of course, are the real thing. But in Adventureland, all the animals will be mechanical replicas, life-size and lifelike, but made from plastic and steel. And here, they're being tried out in a test tank. Continuing our dry run, we're moving into African water. And from the treetops comes the chatter of birds to mix with the cries of wild animals on the banks below. Elephant country. And to match these true life adventure scenes, Here's one of the plastic pachyderms being modeled in our shops. Now we're approaching a waterfall on the Nile. And the trickle that flows over this model will grow to 4,000 gallons a minute in the finished version. Still in Africa, down the Congo, up the Zambezi, into Lake Tanganyika. Here on the shores, we come upon the realm of the African lion and the creatures of the Serengeti Plain. Towering above them all, the giraffe. And it's pretty hard to tell him from our mechanical version. To reproduce these animals requires the combined efforts of the finest designers, sculptors, and master mechanics. Entering Zululand and moving past a cannibal village, we come upon a marshy backwater. The home of the hippopotamus. Our 
Our studio model is still undergoing final tests. And here's another view that shows how we make a hippo hop. Crossing Lake Victoria, the headwaters of the Nile, we turn into one of the tributaries. Pass under a swinging bridge and return to our waterfall. And here the model gives us an idea how our launch will look as we pass behind it. We're on our way home now, and if it gets a little rough from here on, it's only because we're running the rapids through a narrow gorge. Finally, we emerge into quiet waters again. And after our launch brings us back to the home port at the International Dock, We'll want to take a little time to wander through the streets and byways of this tropical settlement on a jungle river. We'll find many things of interest here. For instance, on display in the bazaar will be exotic tropical plants and a collection of rare curios from all over the world. Of course, our trip through Adventureland was mostly make-believe, but it's only a step from fancy to fact and only a short time to our opening date in midsummer of 1955. Now at the pavilion in the plaza, the afternoon band concert is building up to a finale. That's the cue that our visit has come to an end. You've seen some of the things we've done and learned what we're planning to do. This is our progress report to date from Disneyland. Sometimes the processes of nature are so infinitely slow that they're beyond the scope of the standard motion picture camera, such as the growth of a tree or the life cycle of a flower. But with the time-lapse camera, weeks become seconds, and simply by speeding up nature, many of her mysteries are revealed to us. In fact, this type of photography has brought us many startling and unusual scenes in our True Life Adventure series. It's time for one of those adventures now. So let's join our guide and narrator, Winston Hibbler. Sometimes our true life adventures take us to the far corners of the world. And sometimes we find them much closer to home. This is an adventure in nature's half acre. And it happens right here in our own backyard. Of course, this could be your backyard or anybody's for that matter. If this seems a rather commonplace setting on the surface, perhaps when we get close enough to read between the leaves, we may discover there's more in nature's half acre than first meets the eye. Nature has fulfilled her promise. Each of her species has survived. Thus continues unbroken the chain of little happenings and strange events that is the story of nature's half acre.